Last night I had a pretty weird dream. Why don't you tell me about it? I was on television. I did not like it. And no matter how hard I tried, I could not escape myself. Myself, the whole world was a me. Boom! <laughs> and everything was all about me. <laughs> We're trying to get out of here, were you? No! <laughs> And how did that make you feel? How did that make you feel? Uh, you know, I kind of, uh, I kind of liked it at first. You know, I felt connected and I felt affirmed. But you know, it got kind of old. You know, maybe the world shouldn't be about me. Um, I just felt alone. I don't think you should feel that way. It's important to take care of yourself, to be true to the God within you. Go ahead. What? Just do it. Have it your way. Because you're worth it. You're in Wait. good hands. Steve, are you okay? I don't, don't want to grow up. up. Oh, what a feeling. <laughs> oh my. Life's short. Play hard. Taste the rainbow. <coughs> Think different. He who dies with the most toys flies the friendly skies. Taste the rainbow. And relentless focus on you. Focus on you. Relentless focus on you. Relentless focus on you. Relentless focus on you. This is the story of the bigger picture. Evan, welcome to Exile. The deeper mystery of faith. This is the story of God's mission in the world and our place in it. I'm Evan. Hi, I'm Evan. These are my friends. Evan, what's going on? And this is For the Life of the World, Letters to the Exiles. Today, I'm going to do something totally useless. Beauty is the word that shall be our first. Beauty is the last thing which the thinking intellect dares to approach. Since only it dances as an uncontained splendor around the double constellation of the true and the good and their inseparable relation to one another. Beauty is the disinterested one, without which the ancient world refused to understand itself. A word which both imperceptibly and yet unmistakably has bid farewell to our new world. leaving it to its own avarice and sadness. No longer loved or fostered by religion, beauty is lifted from its face as a mask, and its absence exposes features on that face which threaten to become incomprehensible to man. Of it a mere appearance.
appearance in order the more easily to dispose of it. Our situation today shows that beauty demands for itself at least as much courage and decision as do truth and goodness and she will not allow herself to be separated and banned from her two sisters without taking them along with herself in an act of mysterious vengeance. We can be sure that whoever sneers at her name, as if she were an ornament of a bourgeois past, whether he admits it or not, can no longer pray, and soon, Who wrote that? Uh, Hans Urs von Balthasar. I think Balthasar is making a lot of points, but the main point is he's talking about the importance of wonder. We almost, in our culture, never give ourselves the space to appreciate the value that things have in and of themselves. We always want to put them to some sort of pragmatic use. So help me, I need something more tangible. Something I can sort of hold on to. Give you know much about winemaking? Um, it takes a knowledge of soil, of climate, when to pick a grape, when to let it go. All of these things lead into what makes for a good wine. So what's that knowledge taste like? You want me to taste? Yeah. Yeah, taste it. Just taste the book. Tastes like book. That's what knowledge, apart from appreciation, tastes like. We need to develop a palate for what is good, not just for what it can do for us, but for what it is in itself. That fundamental difference can be summed up like this. Wonder is to wisdom what flavor is to cooking or to winemaking for that matter. When God created the world, all the let it be's that you find in the first chapter of Genesis, those are all followed up by an affirmation yeah. of the goodness of what's done. If that is the case and that's who God is, he has his let it be and it is good, then that should be our response to actually appreciate the things that are around us. After all, the scripture says, taste and see that the Lord is good. Not just intellectually understand that God is good. If we lose the sense of God's goodness and wonder at what he's made, Evan, we risk losing a fundamental aspect of our mission in the world. It reminds me of a word that's used frequently in scripture, hundreds of times, literally. What's the word? Perhaps the greatest thing that we can do as, as a Christian community is to behold. Behold our God. Behold his creation. The church has exiled beauty from its conversations. And I think that we need to rediscover the beautiful um, in, in order to uh, recover ourselves, uh, our humanity. Jesus seemed to indicate that beauty is a door into the gospel. Beauty is the door. In Mark 14, Mary of Bethany barges in and uh, breaks open this jar of nard that she's been saving up all her life. And 
disciples are furious at her because she is doing what a woman should only be allowed to do on her wedding day, which was to anoint her bridegroom. Everybody knew what that aroma signified. And they're expecting Jesus to, to kick her out. And Jesus said, no, you have no idea. You don't understand this night. You know, she has done a beautiful thing to me. Mary is responding to this encounter with Jesus when Jesus intentionally came late. He was supposed to come and heal Lazarus, her brother, and he's dead. So she's very upset with him, uh, I can imagine. And Jesus' answer to Mary was his tears. Jesus wept. <laughs> When Jesus wept, it was this gratuitous, useless beauty that was flowing through him into her, and she knew that. <laughs> and so all she could do was to think, what is the most valuable thing that I have to offer back to him? So she grabs this jar, runs in. She wasn't thinking about this drama that she would create, probably. All she knew was that Jesus is going to suffer. So the only thing she can do is anoint him. <laughs> but what she has done is beautiful and, and enduring because it's ephemeral, because it's useless, because it's a waste. God somehow demands of us so, so much more than just this transactional nature. It is really about the gift that we've been given, and the only response we can give back is with extravagance, with gratuitous beauty. And we need to tell this story, not the story of the pragmatism, not the story of utility, this story of extravagance, gratuitous beauty, is the gospel. That is the story that I am, I have come to die for. What really moves us tends to be someone who can be whole.
hear everybody. So you can pray. So you can love. Be still. Behold. Yours. Evan. <laughs>